Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. A bitch is back talking about books. Today is very exciting because I just bought on release day the new Allie Hazelwood book, Love on the Brain. It popped up in my email, Goodreads. Like I get emails sometimes from Goodreads saying, oh, here are new releases that just came out today. And it was Light Lark, which I'm not really gonna buy. I don't know. It's just too new for me. I don't like hardcover also. And Love on the Brain. And it's a very anticipated release. I did make an entire YouTube video about the Steminist novellas. And I was actually going to be editing that and uploading that before this video. I just feel like for me, this video is more urgent. And I really didn't like the way I did the Steminist novels YouTube video. So I'm going to redo it a little bit more organized edit it and then put that out hopefully next week or the week after today what we're going to be talking about is love on the brain by ali hazelwood you didn't know it came out already it's out if you haven't read it yet makes a lot of sense because it literally just came out i am filming this on the 25th it came out on the 23rd and i finished it and read it yesterday so kind of crazy of me I finished it in a day so I gave this book a three and a half out of five stars it kind of sucks like I think my expectations were a little bit higher but because I've read all other Ali Hazelwood works I kind of know how it is and if you've read one of her books you've read them all if you don't like one of her books you're probably not gonna like this one either this book is literally the exact same book as the love hypothesis and the Steminist novellas but in different fonts it's the same main character guy. It's always this insanely big, huge, ginormous. She likes to write like that, by the way. She uses a lot of adjectives in commas a lot, just like how I did right now in her writing, which I kind of like sometimes, but sometimes I'm like, okay. And it's always this quiet, big, brooding man who is secretly pining after a girl. Um, and they're always both scientists, and there's always great commentary about STEM and women in STEM, which is the one thing I will definitely give Allie Hazelwood for doing. In this book, it's the same exact thing. There's a size difference, which I feel really weird about in books. Like, I think I just see the, like, big size difference because it's in so many books. Like, it was in The Hating Game and other stuff like that, but yeah, there's a size difference in this book. She's basically, I think she's 5'1 or she's 5 foot tall, and the guy is 6 foot 4. So there's a, there's a foot and three inches between each other. So yeah, a huge size difference. So here's a synopsis of the story. The story follows a neuroscientist named B, and she moves to Texas years after finishing her grad program to work with NASA on a new project for astronauts. And it's to design this new helmet for space astronauts. I'm not exactly sure what. I'm a dumbass bitch. Yeah, she basically has to work and engineer a new helmet for astronauts that neurological, like you, like there's a lot of shit about that, okay? And basically for this project to create this new product that's never been done, it's very inventive, very innovative. She has to work with her kind of arch nemesis from grad school named Levi Ward. And they are both co-leading this project. Her, B as a neuroscientist, and Ward, Levi Ward, as the engineer for the project. So this is the first time they've seen each other, I believe, in 10 years. B, from the last time she's seen him, has never had a good experience with Levi. She's always thought that Levi hated her. Levi could literally never be in the same room as B and just would always avoid her during grad school, even though they only shared a year together in grad school. And she feels really weird having to work on this project now with him. This project is also a make or break career move for B, so it's very important to her. So yeah, that's basically what this book is about. It's about two super smart STEM NASA scientists who have to work together on a project, but they both don't really like each other. It also goes into how throughout grad school, B was taken by this guy named Tim, and it goes into the backstory of B and Tim's relationship. B had a really big falling out with 
Tim because Tim basically cheated on her for the entirety of their relationship and never treated B with any respect. This entire time that they're working on the project though, Levi still thinks that B is married to Tim and that is kind of a little thing that happens in the book. So B has this whole backstory of having a huge falling out with her ex-fiance and just feels like she doesn't want to be in any relationship anymore. She's very emotionally unavailable and closed off because she believes that relationships will never last even if they are soulmates for each other one day one of the people are gonna die and your heart's gonna get broken no matter what and she just can't take the heartbreak of it it's giving very much ugly love vibes like oh i'm never gonna love again because it hurts too much sorry but yeah it's basically that whole thing the tropes that they really use in here is really just the enemies to lovers the like pining trope and the like longing thing workplace romance as well and i would also say close proximity i guess because they do have to be in close proximity to each other even though levi tries so hard to avoid it there's also a bunch of references in this book and i feel like if you aren't caught up with pop culture it will just fly right over your head there's so many references in this book it's kind of insane they reference you've got mail because both Levi and B both have Twitter handles, but they don't know they're DMing each other on Twitter, but they talk about each other to each other without realizing they're talking to each other. I know that what I just said doesn't really make sense, but if you read the book, you will know exactly what that sentence I just said meant. I promise you. And there's also references to Jurassic Park saying science always finds a way. And there's references to The Office talking about Michael Scott saying like the world's best boss mug that he buys himself. There's a bunch of references. I'm pretty sure that I missed a lot of the references I'm just saying the ones that I got. So yeah, that's basically the premise of the story. It's two scientists, one neuroscientist and one engineer who have to work together, but they have a little tension because they never really liked each other in grad school or it's really hard for each other to work together. I don't want to get into the plot details because there's a lot of different complexities when it comes to the plot aspect, a lot more than the romance aspect, and it would just take a long time to really get into. But yeah, I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I feel like there were a lot of things going for it. There was just also so much I feel like dragged, and I will get into my likes and dislikes. I'll start with my likes first. I did think that this book was better than The Love Hypothesis in the way that they connected the two characters together. First off, both of them are vegan. Like, me being vegan, sometimes I cheat, not gonna lie, but me being vegan and seeing that, that they have that in common, it's a huge thing. They also have really weird relationships with their families weird pasts with their families so they connect on that and they just have a lot of commonalities with each other first off both of their favorite movies is the empire strikes back they just share a lot of similarities with each other and a love for science with each other i think both of their mindsets are very very similar they both want twins b is a twin and i think those things even though they're very minuscule together it just makes sense like them being together makes sense on a fundamental level also logistically too you know they're both scientists they're both in the same field etc etc i feel like it makes a little bit more sense why levi was pining for years and years and years for b in this book than it made sense why Adam was pining for years and years and years for Olive in The Love Hypothesis. It just makes a little bit more sense in this. Also, I feel like the character of B stands out a lot in this book, which I really, really love in the way that her look is a lot different than what you'd see in a lot of romance novels. I love that in this book, they give her a look that you that you wouldn't expect from this like scientist you know b she has purple hair she has a bunch of piercings and tattoos she kind of reminds me of the cool girl goth chick but i guess she's super super insanely smart and talented in neuroscience and is insanely passionate about it and i really like that they gave her that look i think because of that she also probably stood out 
in grad school when Levi and B were together in it, which makes sense why Levi was pining after her. I think it's just the little things that make a lot more sense in this book why they'd want to be with each other than in the love hypothesis. I also think that the the enemies to lovers section of, of On the Brain feels more justified than in any other contemporary romance book to be honest because in most contemporary romance books the enemies to lovers is not really an enemies to lovers it's a dislike to lovers it's a bad first impression to lovers and in this one bad and first impression thing is in there throughout the entire time that they were in grad school together levi makes a horrible impression on her but when you get into the plot details and the logistics they go into the logistics of the science in this book a lot and the logistics of their project together a lot when you get into that part of the book and how it feels like levi is probably sabotaging her part of the project they're supposed to be working on together it makes a lot of sense why he would have a disliking to Levi because the way that Levi treats her the beginning of the book when it comes to the project is writing on her career and it's writing on her future and that part of it is very justified. I also really really like the commentary that they make about women in STEM. This is a constant in every single one of Ali Hazelwood's book. I say it as if she's written a million books she's only written two novels and three novellas but it's a pretty sure constant that's why they call it the steminist novels or the steminist novellas it really is about women in stem and i think the reason why these books are very popular is because of that fact and the commentary in this one is very well done and it makes a lot of good points that I feel like even if you are a man who cannot be in a position as a woman in STEM, to be a, a man in STEM reading this book, you would understand and sympathize with where women are coming from when they talk about the struggles it is to be a woman in STEM. Take a shot for every single time I say woman in STEM, okay? So one of the things that they reference a lot in this book is called sausage referencing and what they describe sausage referencing is is that anytime a woman okay anytime b would say anything in this book that has to do with the science that has to do with anything that she is actually very very smart and very knowledgeable on the men around her would not believe her or question her question her ability to be a scientist to be good at her job and what sausage referencing is, and they describe sausage referencing in the book, is when a man has to stick up for you. When a man has to come in and say, I think we should believe B because I think she knows how to do her job well because she is the smartest scientist in this building and she's also a co-lead on this project. So let's take her stuff into account. Sausage referencing is basically when a man has to come in and back up a woman to justify the woman for being how she is. And they talk about it in the book a lot. They even describe how it kind of sucks that people just don't respect you as much until a man has to come in and give you the okay, the confirmation that, hey, you are respected by me, so everyone else should respect you. Like, oh, since you're respected by one man, you can be respected by everybody. It sucks, but I like also that they describe that even B, even though it sucks that sausage referencing is a thing in the first place, that she has to use it to her advantage and does use it to her advantage with Levi because that's just how it is. Like, that's just how society is. You have to have a man back up your claims, back up your position in order to be heard in STEM. And it's still an ongoing problem right now. And I really like how they talk about things like that. And I think this book in general is really good at discussing and talking about things besides the romance. Other than the actual romance. The actual romance is a little bit like, uh, okay, well if you read one, you've read them all. So now I will go into my dislikes of the book. First off, I know way too much about Marie Curie. She's probably an amazing scientist. This book has page after page about Marie Curie and her life. I feel like I could write an entire dissertation about Marie Curie. I swear to God, they went on for pages telling me the history of Marie Curie. And 
I hope I'm saying her name right. I think that's how you say Marie Curie's name. I'm a dumbass bitch. I don't know. And I feel like it just really wasn't that necessary in this book. I know they, they make it a thing, but to have literal pages and pages on Marie Curie explaining her history, I just, it got me bored. I'm just like, can I get to the actual story now? I get it. She had a husband. Her husband was like this. They went on bike rides together. She got this and this and that. Oh, she had a childhood. I literally know so much about Marie Curie. I know so much more about Marie Curie than I ever should have. And I, d I didn't like that part of the book. I did, I did like it. Don't get me wrong. I like having Marie Curie in the book and having parallels to B's life in it. But they went on. I kid you not. I think I've read sections of this book that go on for two pages just explaining the past life of Marie Curie in in 1871 or some shit like that like she got the no mobile part blah, blah, blah. like i i literally do not need that information in a in a contemporary romance book like this i don't need that information if i want to know about marie curie i will look her up okay you could just give me the big points about marie curie and i will understand it but i could open up a page and it'll probably have marie curie's name in there i swear to god and that part of this book bored me a little bit just because it was too much. There was just too much of it. So that's one dislike I, ha I had about the book. To go into the next point that I'm talking that I don't like about this book, this book was really, really slow. It felt so slow to me. It's only a 300 plus page book. I finished it in a day. It's very easy to read, but maybe I'm just a dumbass bitch, but they went into, into certain topics that just felt really unnecessary to the story as a whole. First of all, they went do paragraph and paragraph and paragraph about the neuroscience and the engineering that it takes to have this helmet that they were making for the astronauts work. That's what I'm telling you. I'm a dumbass bitch. I, do I care? Do I know? Do I know about neuroscience and what it takes to make a helmet for an astronaut inside space? No, I do not. I need the big points in order to understand what they're doing, but I don't need to know the little minuscule details about how to make this helmet because it doesn't it doesn't justify the entire story as a whole do you understand what i'm saying like i i'm a stupid ass bitch okay i'm an arts major maybe that's what it is maybe if you were all in stem you would eat this shit up but i'm an arts major and so reading that i just thought it's unnecessary to the novel it's unnecessary to the book i don't understand why i'm reading this but okay i guess like, you could skim over some paragraphs and the entire story would be the same. And the last and biggest point that I want to make that I really disliked about this book was that it just felt really immature. These people are 30 plus years old. Levi is 32 and B is, I think, five years younger. They're old. They should understand how to express their feelings. You should be able to stay in a room with the girl that you like. I understand. I know what they're talking about in this, okay? I understand what it's like to have a crush on someone and not being able to talk to them, to just freeze up when you're around the person that you like. I understand that, but it happened a little too frequently in this book where I was like, are you okay, dude? Like, you literally... What? The things that I feel like could be really cute moments of like, oh my god, like, he's so distracted by her because she's so beautiful. Those moments dragged on for too long. And also on B's end too, because B re really misread Levi for the entire book. She's the only one who could never see that Levi was into her for years and years and years. She's the only one who couldn't see it because everyone around her is saying, oh, girly, he looks at you with longing. He wants to be with you. He stares at you. He loves you. Everyone says this to her. And B just can't see it. She's just blind to it. You dumb bitch. You dumb fucking bitch. No one is this oblivious. And she just really, really is bad at reading faces, I guess, because she misreads his face that much. Every single time that he looks at her, she says, why is he staring at me like there's something on my face or he's looking at me in disgust? I'm like, girl, bitch where? 
bitch, where? Where are you seeing this look of disgust? Like, how can you translate that? Be Are you really that oblivious? It was really giving that because I can do that in romance novels. I can do misreading things and pining and et cetera, et cetera. But it just happened a little too frequently in this where I was just like, it's getting to the point of immaturity. It's getting to the point of immaturity. It's just too much. And then on top of that, take a shot. For every single fucking time B mentions that Levi hates her, it, it would be a bad day for you. It would be a day in the hospital if you took a shot for every single time that she says that. Because she says it on every other page for the first two-thirds of the book. She says it. I literally started counting. Once I got to page 150, I was like, why is she saying this so often? Why is she saying, oh, Levi, you hate me. Oh, Levi hates me. Oh, it's because Levi hates me. Oh, Levi hates me. Oh, you can just, like, don't worry about it. Like, you can just be around me for a little bit. Like, you can go throw up at home. Every other, every other page. I started counting it after page 150. And even then, it got, it still kept going. It was on page 151. I know that it's very similar to other types of science, except that I know that Levi doesn't like me. And Levi knows that I know that he doesn't like me and that I don't like him in return. It's on page 159. It's on page 193. And it keeps going and going. And those are only after I started counting it out. And then on page 196, it got so annoying to the point where Levi even points it out and says, B, can we have, like, can you stop saying that I don't like you? Because you're obviously misreading it. Like, I like you. I, like, I don't not like you. And he has to point that out to her. And she still just doesn't believe him. And it got to a point where I was like, girl, really, you are a neuroscientist. You're so smart. You are so fucking smart, but you're so dumb. Like, you are so dumb. And it and it got to a point where I just got so frustrated as a reader. I was like, oh my god. And then this is another thing about where I felt like this book just felt so immature to me. Is that there was so many points in this book. Because this plot moved by so slowly. The love story in this moved by so slowly. It's literally them just working on this project. And finding out she's not actually married. Then they get together and hook up. And then they and then that's it. And they stay together. And then there's other plot points while getting into but it was so frustrating because the actual time in which the plot was about to move forward, it would always get interrupted by a phone call or something or someone knocking on the fucking door. Every single time, I kid you not, it happened more than three times. They're making out and they're making out. Ring, ring. And then a phone call happens and his niece, I will call her his niece, is like sick in the hospital that he's about to say i love you and then his assistant comes out from behind and is like hey levi i need you to write sign off on this thing and then they're about to confess something else to each other and then someone else interrupts and then this and this and that and it happened every other fucking time the plot was about to move forward the plot was about to move forward and they're about to explain something to each other they're about to finally communicate something and then someone has to fucking interrupt. It happened every time. I was like, oh my god. They were about to have sex. And then, and then another phone call happens. I'm like, no, no, no. Can you stop? Like, not again. Not again. Why? It was so frustrating. It happened so much. I understand if this happens in books, right? One, maybe two times. It happened almost every single time the plot was about to move forward and I just couldn't take it anymore and I got so frustrated. I was like, this is definitely not a five-star read for me. Like, I want to like this book so much. I just couldn't. Like, I, it had the tropes that I loved. It had the pining. It had the longing. It had, it had all the little cute moments that gave me butterflies in my stomach. But oh my god it was so frustrating holy shit so frustrating and there was just too many tangents about other things that just didn't matter to the plot i am so sorry that i'm basically now shitting on this book but i i couldn't for the life of me like it more than a three and a half star out of five i think that the the stem commentary and women in stem commentary was very very well done but other than that the actual story the actual love story i just was like girly first of all i've read this book a million times because you've written it ali hazelwood a million times before but i wish that she could maybe go beyond the formula ali could go beyond the formula that she's already created because this is it was just getting too much the the miscommunications the interruption it was getting too much and i was just like 
not for these grown-ass adults not for these grown-ass adults like i love it when grown-ass adults act like middle schoolers and teenagers but this was getting to a point where it just was so unbelievably like it just didn't it was just too unbelievable like every single time really every single time you're gonna move the plot forward you're gonna make out you're gonna confess to each other something has to interrupt really really like are you not tired of this yourself girly are you not tired of, of writing this yourself anyway that was my little rant on that now i wanted to get into one thing i did like but it was a spoiler one thing i did like was the third act conflict which i will give praise to because i was very shocked that i like this not the third act conflict within the relationship portion there was two moving parts to the story there's the romance and then there's the plot and i thought the plot aspect of the book had a really really good third act conflict that had me on the edge of my seat and they had a really good build up so the whole thing is that throughout the story there's some weird things going on with the technology in their project in levi and b's project um the computers and the system and this all comes to a building point there's a there's an astronaut they've been testing the helmet on named guy and it comes to a head when guy they're finally testing the prototype of the helmet on the astronaut named guy and he starts getting seizures and it's there's a down point in the book where it feels like everything is falling apart for B and her career is over her twitter handle is over and and someone hacked her twitter and did all this other stuff and the downward spiral of part of the book and then you find out that guy was actually the one who hacked into the system was sabotaging B and doing all of this to basically mess with B and mess with the project and the lead up to it was really well done because they talk about how it felt like maybe guy wasn't getting credit for the project that they were supposed to work on because Levi took over when it was really supposed to be Guy leading the project. And it goes into this whole backstory and I think the lead up to that was really well done because they gave you enough clues but the reveal was still shocking enough and good enough to stay for me to stay on the edge of my seat and it felt very justified even though it was a very bombastic third act. Like he literally was about to kill B and put a gun to her head. And stuff like that and then a cat comes in and it's an ex machina cat and that's a whole thing within itself but yeah i did like that third act and i will give it that so that's kind of the spoiler section that i wanted to to give that is my review of love on the brain i gave it a three and a half out of five stars okay sorry i just woke up but i just wanted to add and to clarify that the only reason why i gave this such a low-ish score for the way it's written is really good like there's a lot of really good parts to it the only reason why i gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars is because this is a romance book this is marketed as a romance book so the things that need to really stand out in the book or that need to be good in any sense of the word is the romance but the fact of the matter is that the romance was the worst part of the book so if you're picking up a book for a romance book you know that is the genre that you pick the book up in that part of the book is not going to be as good as the other parts the plot aspects or all of the other like commentary and other things that you get in this if it was marketed as a different type of book if it wasn't marketed as a romance or as a rom-com i probably would have rated this a lot higher but it's a 3.5. I liked it, but not for the romance. And it was a cute couple. The book just dragged on. If you've read one Allie Hazelwood book, you've read them all. I will hopefully upload my review on the Seminist novellas soon. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've read this book yet, if you've picked it up, please let me know what you thought. If you disagree, if you agree, please be respectful because i'm sensitive yeah just let me know your opinions below um i'm really really sorry if you liked it because i know i get very sad when i like something and someone else doesn't as much three and a half out of five stars it wasn't horrible but it wasn't good either so let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you haven't picked it up yet pick it up read it it's a good time it's a quick read i will see you in the next video